Hello beautiful people, here's a small guide or how-to video on the German flying wing, the Horton 229. Hope you enjoy. So was the Horton 229 a stealthy fighter? No. Did the USB-2 Spirit stealth bomber get design ideas from the Horton? No. Was the Horton the first powered flying wing? No. Was the Horton the first jet powered flying wing? Yes, indeed it was. The Horton was also in the German fighter emergency program called Jäger Notprogram, just as the Heinkel 162 was. The Horton Ho 229 is also known as the Gotha Go 229, and that is because of the Gotha factory where the Horton was supposed to be produced. Once airborne, I think the Horton is the most elegant and beautiful looking aircraft in War Thunder so far. Anyhow, let's look at some of the pros and cons. Some of the pros... Fast. At its 7.0 battle rating, the 229 is one of the fastest, if not the fastest aircraft in War Thunder. Top speed is 910 km an hour, reached at 8000 meters. But even at low altitudes, the Horton is very fast. Armament. The flying wing has two of the best cannons found on aircraft in War Thunder. These are the Machining Kanone 100i or MK103 30mm cannons, and more about that in a bit. Structural limits. The wings of the 229 are almost indestructible, with the limit being at 980 km an hour. The plane has a full set of flaps. Limits for combat and takeoff flaps are 558 and 529 km an hour. So they are strong, but not super impressive. Takeoff flaps are very strong though with 529 km an hour. And the landing flaps are also good with 380 km an hour. Limit for the landing gear is also very good with 450 km an hour. Stall speed. Because of the huge wing area, the 229 can almost stand still in the air without actually falling out of the sky. The stall speed is 165 km an hour. Turn time. The 229 has, again for its size, a very impressive turn time of just 24 seconds. Take off. The Horton requires only a short runway to get airborne and rotates around 170 km an hour, and no flaps are needed. Energy retention. The 229 is a heavy aircraft, and like for example the B-47s, it can gain a lot of energy in dives and retain it for a longer period. Air brakes. Useful for a quick slowdown for landings and in long shallow dives, the 229 is equipped with air brakes. And some of the cons. Acceleration. From takeoff to around 500 km an hour, the 229 is, due to its weight, incredibly slow at accelerating. The acceleration is by far the slowest of all the aircraft around this battle rating. Size. For a fighter, the 229 is a pretty large aircraft. If caught in a turn, you will definitely present a huge target. Energy bleed. Okay, so in the pro section, I said the 229 was good at keeping the energy, and it really is. But after a couple of sharp turns, you have lost all of it again. The 229 is one of the worst aircraft in losing energy that way. You can go from 700 km an hour in the initial turn, and at the end of a couple of turns be at around 300 km an hour. Flight characteristics. The 229 is not easy to fly effectively. It has a bad rate of roll, and even worse, your rotation. It's heavy to control, and needs a long time to line up a target. It also has control issues when you turn tightly, and the gun reticle can snap into place for the lack of a better explanation. And that makes an aim shot very difficult and at times impossible. G's. You can pull a lot of positive and negative G's with the Horton, which is on one hand good because it won't break the plane, but it happens pretty often and you will on the other hand find yourself unable to do much due to blackouts, redouts and loss of control. Landing. You can and should touch down with the 2 to 9 at around 170 km an hour and preferably slower than that. The reason is the ridiculously huge front wheel on the Horton. It looks almost comical, and if you touch down at around 170 km an hour or more, the last wheel will make you bounce like crazy. It will make you bounce a lot of times, and each time it does, you will get closer and closer to the end of the runway. It's very annoying. The best thing you can do landing the Horton is not to use the landing gear at all. Just barely land the plane. 
The great thing about this is that it is much faster and the 229 does not take any damage at all landing on the belly. So no SL wasted repairing it. And lastly, secondary armament. The 229 cannot carry any secondary weapons. You only have the 30mm cannons. The MK103 is a great cannon. It has a fast muscle velocity but a very slow rate of fire. You have 340 shells total and for the two cannons that is more than enough. So 340 shells are good for a lot of strafing attacks on ground targets. It is very rare that I have run out of ammo with the 229. The cannons have access to four different kinds of shells. High explosive, incendiary, armor piercing incendiary, and high velocity armor piercing shells. The best build to use once unlocked is the HVAP build. The HVAP shell has good but recently nerfed by 20% armor pen because of Gaijin's awful implementation of a new armor penetration table. The shell's armor pin was great before, but now it is only good with 61mm at 500m. It is however still enough to destroy any light tank and most medium and heavy tanks from a more top-down attack angle, but not really as effective as previously. All other aircraft using the MK-103's HVAP build has a build full of those shells, while on the 229 it's only every second shell that is HVAP. So here we have another reduction in the MK-103's effectiveness on the 229. I have only used the 2 to 9 for a few times in air battles, mostly just to destroy tanks with in order to get the last of the modifications unlocked. That is not to say the 2 to 9 will not work in air battles, but with its issues I just don't think it's worth it, especially when you get caught at low speeds with so many enemy aircraft around. In that regard it is in my opinion much better suited for mixed battles. Like the Heinkel 162, you need to be careful using the whole 229. The Gota can easily put you into situations where you basically kill yourself with maneuvering. Having a tight turning radius is great and very important for a fighter, but with the 229 you should never use it, but only in emergencies for flying defensively. The energy bleed is just not worth it, it is really that bad. After a turn or two, the 229 is completely out of breath. Furthermore, the painfully slow acceleration further increases the danger of trying to dogfight in this fighter. The best way to use the Horton is as a zoom and boom aircraft, and if you can be disciplined enough to just do that, the 229 can be very effective. Unfortunately, it is difficult to precisely put the 30mm cannons on ground or air targets. It's mostly due to those heavy and at times unpredictable flight characteristics and control issues. It is actually quite challenging to use effectively. Once you hit anything with the MK-103 cannons, the effectiveness is not in question though. In this match I still sadly had not the belts unlocked. So for this match the build is the default build with the APR shell having less armor pin with 47mm at 500m compared to the HVAP 61mm at the same distance. The cannons are great for strafing and you can rack up a large number of crits and assists with only a few HVAP shells hitting a tank or just outright destroying it. At Battle Rating 7.0, the 229 will face a mix of prop and jet fighters. They will all be able to out-accelerate the Gota, so keeping up the speed is vital. As as previously mentioned, do not try to turn and find anyone if you want to survive either. After a dive, use the very good energy retention to either speed away or use it for a very fast climb, where even other jets will not be able to keep up. But all that being said, I do really enjoy the 2-9.